All habitat installation projects begin with the same first step, assessing the natural fish habitat currently available to determine what and how many additional structures you need to accomplish your fishery goal. Hey guys, Garrett Lee here, fisheries biologist at Pond King. Today I'm out on our five acre demo lake to talk to you about creating the ideal fish habitat to achieve your bass fishery goals. Typically speaking, our customers have one or two goals, ensuring increased catch rates of quality bass or producing true trophy class bass. As you can guess, on our demo lake, our goal is trophy bass production. As a general rule of thumb, we recommend that 10 to 15% of the surface area of your fishery have some sort of structure. If your goal is quality catch rates, then you can get away with providing the lower end of that spectrum. But because our goal for this fishery is to maximize the size of the fish we catch, we're planning on covering 15% of the surface area with habitat. The reason for this distinction is that providing more ambush cover, the bass won't have to work so hard for their next meal and fewer calories will be expended, meaning they'll get fatter faster. To achieve our 15% coverage, we decided to break up our habitat improvement project into three manageable installations over the course of a year. But before we could determine how much of which habitat we needed, the first thing we had to do was assess the current type and amount of habitat available in the five acre body of water. When it comes to assessing available habitat, we look for hard structural cover such as submerged trees, brush piles or rock piles, highly dynamic soft cover such as aquatic vegetation, or habitat created by the bottom contour of the pond such as drop-offs, ledges, and points. Then, for each type of structure we encountered, we estimated the surface area covered by that structure. By dividing the surface area covered by habitat by the lake's total surface area, what we learned was that in our five acre lake, we only had around 7% coverage, which means we needed to add an additional 8% to get where we needed to be. To determine the amount of cover to add and where, you have to understand the role of each type of habitat. Because habitat availability and diversity in all portions of the water column is key to a productive, sustainable fishery. In our lake, we had a fair amount of standing timber in certain areas. However, because of the lake's low density of shallow water habitat, we knew that this was an area of first concern. For this late winter installation, we are deploying 30 units, which is about 90 individual clusters of our honey hole grass. We are installing these units now to help provide early season cover as both bait fish and predator species begin their seasonal movements into shallow water to feed and reproduce. Our next installation will consist of an additional 30 units of honey hole grass, along with some honey hole trees and honey holes. This project is planned for early June to increase the habitat availability in the shallow areas, as well as begin enhancement in the moderate to deep water portions of the lake. Then, in September, we'll be back with our final 30 units of honey hole grass and any additional honey hole trees or honey holes. This will complete our enhancement project before the fish begin their fall transition. Ensuring your pond or lake has adequate habitat availability is vital for you to reach your fishery's goal. Through this detailed evaluation, we can help you pinpoint exactly where your current available habitat is lacking and maximize the results of your efforts. While we certainly can do large-scale installations, we can also work with you over time to get your habitat to where it needs to be to reach your goal. If you got any questions on assessing your current available habitat or ideas for a future video, drop us a line in the comments below. If you found this information helpful, use the button below to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all down at the pond.